Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. It's the uh, saving error. I mean, time in and time out, he just uh, produces top-notch players that compete at a high level. And I want to go there and compete at a high level. I mean, nothing's going to be given to me, and I like competing for... Uh, against the top people in the country. So that's why I'm going, so I can get a top-notch competition. That was Yabi Anoma, one of 15 Alabama football signees during last week's early signing period. Good evening, everybody, and welcome in to Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm WVUA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris. Tonight, as always, from Buffalo Rock, one of the outstanding Pepsi products. Tonight, just regular, good old-fashioned, Pepsi, a Southern original. There we go. I don't know how it's not on since we just tested it before the show, but we got it now. Welcome into TITV. And uh, we are ready to go with Ice Cold Pepsi, a Southern original from Buffalo Rock. And according to an Alabama football press release, the Crimson Tide signed one five-star prospect. You saw him earlier. That was Anoma. Thirteen four-star prospects and seven players will play in the Under Armour All-American game. Here's what Coach Saban had to say last Wednesday about this early signing class in this week's Coach Talk presented by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. We're very pleased and happy with the 15 players that we were able to sign uh, to Alabama today. Um, I think there's a, a, a lot to do to finish this class, and uh, we can only take 23 guys this year, so we basically have eight spots left. Uh, I think this class, th these signings today represent a lot of hard work, um, and you know the coaches did a good job. A lot of our players, uh, the team we have here at Alabama, the academic folks, when these guys visit our administration, you know, all did um, a very good job. So we've kind of identified our needs, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to uh, finish. All right, Coach Saban, last Wednesday. Uh, everybody dealing with this new early signing period, Alabama, Coach Saban said, will sign 23, 15 mm -hmm. of those. Taken care of on Wednesday. All in all, it turned out to be a good day for Alabama. Your takeaways from the early signing period, Rodney? Well, I thought it was a really good day. You know, Gary, there are some guys that are committed that I think are top players that did not sign, but I still think obviously Alabama's in good position with those as well as some other guys as we start to look forward. But I would say when you look at the secondary, which is really a priority, Alabama got Savian Smith, who's already going mm -hmm. through the practices, the JUCO player. Uh, Josh Job is one of the best corners in the country. Jalen Armour Davis is an outstanding tal talent out of Mobile St. Paul's. So I thought that was really strong. You look on the defensive line, the day started with Christian Barmore out of Philadelphia when he committed. So I thought that was a big pickup to go with Stephon Wynn. And, uh, you know, you've got, you mentioned a Yabi Anoma. He's a guy that could be a defensive end outside linebacker, maybe a Terrell Lewis type player and, and some other guys. But certainly I think, Gary, when you look, and there's Anoma right here, but I thought it was, you know, just overall an excellent class. That yeah. was Bob Barmore. Yeah, let's, let's, let's run down some of the prospects. Since we got Barmore yeah. up, talk about what he means as far as having a big, dominant, physical defensive lineman. Well, he is that. I mean, when you look at him a little bit physically, like Raekwon Davis coming out of high school, 6'6", 290 pounds, a guy that really started – blossoming his senior year. Gary got a lot of offers this year, uh, several SEC schools. He's just a, a guy that's really physical, big, strong guy. I think when he gets in here and develops, I think he's got a chance to be an outstanding player. All right, let's go back to Anoma because he is, according to the recruiting analyst, the only five-star uh, Late pickup for Alabama. His best football is probably ahead of him. He's only played two years, but long limber. Also from Baltimore, like Terrell Lewis, and he might may remind some folks of Terrell Lewis. Absolutely, uh, I think so. Qu quite a quite a bit actually. When you look at him, Gary, I think he may be the best pass rusher in the country. When you're talking about high school prospects in this class, guy that had 24 sacks. Uh, you know, just a really dominant player on, on that level. I think when he gets here and he has a chance to, again, he'll fill out. He's about 235, 240 with a long frame. Uh, he's got a chance to be a great, great player. Another defensive lineman, Stephon Wynn, a guy who's been in the class for some time, but he's a guy that's uh, big, strong, and physically ready to play at the next level. I think when you look at Stephon Wynn, first of all, his dad was an outstanding college player at Clemson, by the way. So he has the bloodlines. 
Uh, you know, football is a really he's, – he's natural at it. I think when I look at him, he reminds me a little bit of Dalvin Tomlinson coming out of high school. So, again, another really key player because like the other guys we mentioned, Barmore, Anoma, uh, Wynn is a front player, a defensive front player, which Alabama really needed in this class. We saw Josh Jove earlier, crucial uh, piece of this recruiting class as far as the defensive back. Another guy that's coming in to help the defensive line and outside pass rushers, Jerez Park, familiar mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. signed last year, decided to, to go through with the gray shirt. Now he's here and practicing, and, and don't sleep on Jerez Park. He's got a lot of talent. Yeah, Jerez Park's out of Sebastian River, uh, Florida. Gary was a top 100 player last year. You never hear of a guy that says, hey, listen, I I I'll gray shirt if that's what it takes to get into the Alabama class. So he set out this year, uh, re-signed this year or signed this year. He'll be a part of this class, obviously. A guy that's really athletic. He was fast. He's quick. Uh, he can do a lot of different things. Now, he you look at him right now. He's working with the outside linebackers. He's already here participating. All right, but eventually he could become a down defensive end. Uh, he has that kind of body that he could fill out and do that. So we'll see what he does. But again, I, I think it's another outstanding talent. Great defensive line class, great secondary class. Alabama, though, always looking for offensive linemen. The best in this class potentially might be Emil Akior, the big center out of Indianapolis Cathedral High School really in Indiana. Yeah, right. He's a really physical interior player, Gary, a guy that was committed to Michigan for the longest time. And uh, as you mentioned, from Indianapolis Cathedral, and uh, just he, he never quite got Alabama out of his system, continued to visit, really liked uh, the program they have here. And again, I think he's a guy that's very capable of being a center on this level, so I would watch him at that spot. Or if not, he'll be one of the interior, you know, one of the guard spots. And real quickly, a thought on a guy who committed last Friday but did not sign, Bobby Brown, the big defensive lineman out of Texas, Arlington, Texas, committed to A&M, then decommitted, committed to Bama, but they're still going to have to work, it looks yeah. like, because he didn't go ahead and sign. Yeah, 6'4", 285. I mean, he looks the part. Bobby Brown does outstanding player out of Arlington, Lamar, Texas, guy that's been a, really a top target for Alabama for a long time. And, again, we, we talked about all those defensive mm -hmm. front players. That's just another one, Gary. And when you look at the defensive front, front and the secondary recruiting Alabama's done those were the two top priorities in my opinion in this class and I think Alabama's doing a great job in terms of filling those remember the second signing period like always will be the first Wednesday in February Alabama will have to wait and sign Bobby Brown then it looks like about seven other players if Brown is part of that class as well we're well, right in less than a week only six days in fact Alabama will play Clemson for the third straight season and the WVUA 23 sports team will be there live for the Sugar Bowl edition of Crimson Tide kickoff. Tune in on New Year's Day at 11 a.m. for a full one-hour preview of the college football playoff semifinal. The Sugar Bowl CTKO is presented by Ziegler Season to Please Meets. We thank them for bringing you CTKO. We'll be there Saturday, as always, through, well, actually Thursday through the weekend, and then on Monday, CTKO at 11 a.m. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, let's get right into the Sugar Bowl matchup. It may be the third straight season Alabama will play Clemson, but how different is this Tigers football team? We'll discuss. And coming up, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information on the screen. Interact with Tider Insider TV right now. Go ahead and give us a call at 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Email us at TITV at WVUA23.com or tweet at us at hashtag TITV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV will return right after this timeout. They were a good team last year, obviously. Um, they went all last year. Uh, we came up a little bit short. Uh, you know, they're a really good team. They good on offense, defense, special teams, you know, all around there. They deserve to be in this playoff. They look real good, like always, man. We played them, what, the last two years, so we kind of know what's coming. What's different this year, of course, is the game is to get to the national championship, whereas the last two years, Clemson and Alabama played for the national title. Now, both teams are also missing some key players from the last two games. Rodney, we'll have more on, on the Clemson team when we make our predictions mm -hmm. for the game at the end of the show. But real quick uh, recap of, uh, of Clemson's season. They only lost one game at Syracuse on a Friday night. Uh, they don't have Deshaun Watson. But, boy, uh, they've got playmakers on offense, and defensively they're nasty. You know what? A lot of people, that's the thing. They say they don't have Deshaun Watson. But if you look at their offensive numbers, they're up. Yeah. I mean, their scoring average And Kelly Bryant might be a better pure runner listen, than Deshaun. Well, listen, he's carried 173 times this year. People talk about Jalen Hurts and the running backs not getting enough carries. Look at that guy. Kelly Bryant has 173 carries, Gary. That's 70 more than any other player on their team. So, 
Uh, yeah, Kelly Bryant's done an outstanding job as a runner. Uh, he's got 13 touchdown passes, whereas what did Deshaun have? Over 40 last year mm -hmm. heading into the game. But, but again, he's rushed for 650 plus yards. He's got 11 rushing touchdowns. Uh, and their offensive numbers, again, are up a little bit. And that front four on defense is really oh, good. Oh, boy. I probably the best you, in the country. Pro probably. I mean, I think they're somewhat comparable to Auburn. I think that's similar. Uh, I think Auburn does an outstanding job. I think Clemson does a great job. I mean, they've got two pass rushing defensive ends. Clellan Farrell and Austin Bryant. Gary, between them, those yeah. guys have about 18 or 19 yeah. sacks. I mean, they've got – And then those two guys in the middle just yeah, stuff Chester, to run. Uh, I called him Chester McLaughlin. That's a throw. He back. looks like him a little bit. <laughs> De De that guy's 30 – that's 30 years ago. Dexter Lawrence. Uh, and boy. Um, yeah, Dexter Lawrence is a 340-pounder in the middle, along with uh, Wilkins, Christian Wilkins. He might be Wilkins. their best player. Wilkins has got yeah. five sacks, yeah. nine tackles for losses, the interior player. He's really good. Well, more on Clemson and Alabama though, coming up at the end in our game picks. Well, coming up next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, there's the information on how you can get in touch with us. Go ahead and call in now at 205-348-9882 because we'll come back. We want to hear from you. We uh, want to know what's on your mind heading in to this big college football playoff semifinal. That's next here on TITV. Let's check in on the Bama men's basketball team. They lost their fourth game of the season last Friday in Birmingham against Texas. Boy, it really wasn't close. 66-50 at the Legacy Arena. Alabama struggled in every area. Uh, they got handled. And uh, Alabama now closes out its non-conference slate at 8-4, although they have one more non-conference game in the SEC Big 12 Challenge later in the year against Oklahoma. But they open the SEC schedule at home Saturday at 5 at Coleman Coliseum against Texas A&M. It's a big game. Get out there and support the Tide on Saturday. All right, welcome back into TITV. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Let's go right to our Daniel Moore New Life Art Hotline. Remember, if there's a great moment in Alabama football history, Daniel Moore has captured it. Let's go uh, and start off with Rick in Bluff Park. Hey, Rick, how are you? Fellas, appreciate you taking my call. Always. Uh, I think it's absolutely imperative that our offensive line has our best game of the year. Agree. Uh, and um, I think uh, would we get back into the one-back running attack with Bo that we had last year? Sometimes it takes six or seven carries to get into a, a rhythm, so to speak. And uh, uh, so far as recruiting, I think I'm glad that our top priorities were met and everything. I appreciate you taking my call, fellas. I'd like to hang on and listen to your response. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll turn this over to Rodney, Rick. I, I agree with you. And, and let me say this. There are a lot of talks about the quarterback, a lot of talk about the quarterbacks, whether, you know, Jalen's been good enough, should they play two up. But let me say this. Regardless of what quarterback they're playing, whether it's a, a pro-style offense or a zone read opposite, Alabama's a running team. First and foremost, period. And I don't care who the quarterback is. Alabama does need to be able to run the football, right? Mm -hmm. He consistently yeah. win this game, yeah. I think. You yeah. agree? And Bo Scarborough was off to a big yeah. game before he was injured last year. And I've heard he's had some really good practices. He's starting to look like the Bo Scarborough of old. But, uh, you know, you've got some excellent running backs, uh, Rick. When you talk about, uh, you know, some things that Damian Harris could do, uh, he's had a great year, obviously. And, and Josh Jacobs, I think his quickness, Gary, and his ability as a receiver could be a – could be a factor in this We game. mentioned this last week. Any thought, Rodney, or do you think that there's a chance you may see some two-pack stuff I mean, in you this could. Game? They certainly have used that some this year. You know, again, I haven't heard that that's, you know, something that might be part of the plan, but but you never really know. Yeah, you never do until you turn it on and watch the game or you go down to the <laughs> Superdome. All right, let's go to Bessemer and talk with our buddy John. John, what's up, man? Gary, what's going on, man? Merry Christmas. What happened to you? Same to you. Hey, man, I was all over to I want to uh, resign and that. Uh, last Wednesday, and the, the guy said, told me, if Alabama, I mean, if Alabama can, can, can get more players up there between now and Saturday, can it? Can they do it? And I, I want to tell Alabama good luck to Sugar Bowl. Oh yeah, all Later. right, John. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 looking forward to the Sugar Bowl. As far as I, you know, if I got your question right, if they could sign, you know, seven or eight more guys and move up maybe into that top spot in the rankings, I don't know. I mean, Georgia, Clemson. Uh, Texas all really, really strong. I do think Alabama can close with a flurry and certainly be a top five recruiting class, right? And yeah, I think they they're, will. they're right there at five yeah, now. Yeah. So they've, they've moved up quite a bit, all the people out there that were really worried about it. Uh, you know, they've moved up like we expected them to. And, you know, if they finish strong, Gary, I, I could see it being a top three, maybe even a four class, you know, certainly up there. Ohio State's had a great year as well. So, you know, we'll see. But I think the stretch is, is very, very important that they finish strong. Absolutely. All right, we're going to get an email before we go to break. And uh, this is from Gary and Helena. Do you think that Tua Tonga-Valoa will have a designated series against Clemson? Um, you know, we touched on this last week. I don't know. I, I'll say what I said last week, and I've been saying on my radio show. I think in this game, 
if Jalen is struggling and the offense is struggling, I think it might be a good move to bring Tua in, to maybe see if he can give him a charge. I'm not saying hang him out to dry, put him in an impossible situation, but I just think, Rodney, all hands on deck. you got to do whatever you have to do to try to win this game. So if you got the point offensively where you felt stagnant, you know, maybe you do bring him in. I don't know. Look, I, I'm not going to say there's a plan to play him. That's not what I'm saying at all. I do think he's being prepared to play. Right. If the circumstances arose that maybe he had to come in the game for whatever reason, I think he will certainly have enough reps and, and pre preparation to come into the game and play well. All right. Uh, we are going to take a timeout, but we're going to come back with more phone calls, more emails, and, yes, Brandon's checking the Twitter. Use that hashtag TITV. Or uh, get on the phone lines now. They're open at 205-348-9882. The New Life Art Hotline is open. We'll be back with more of your phone calls right after this on TITV. Well, time is of the essence as we welcome you back into TITV. So let's go right back to Daniel Moore's New Life Art Hotline and welcome in Greg from Birmingham. Hey, Greg, how are you? Fine. How are you doing? Very Good. well. Thank you. Good. Uh, we have signed a lot of defensive linemen in this class, as you pointed out, but most of them are defensive ends. Uh, I remember we signed two years ago a kid out of Texas. I want to say Kendall Jones, if that was his name. Mm -hmm. Big, big kid. Uh, we recruiting him. We need some space eaters in the middle if Payne uh, leaves as he might, and then we lose Frazier already. So just wondering about somebody in the middle. All right, Greg. Uh, Kendall Hulk Jones, uh, yeah, he is a big guy. The problem is – uh, if some pictures I've seen recently of him, he might have gotten too big. He, he's well over 400 pounds. Uh, he is a good athlete. I just don't get the feeling that Alabama's involved with him anymore, right? No, no. Uh, <clears throat> that, that kind of that ship sailed a while back, I think. But, you know, when you look at the interior, you know, again, St Stephon Wynn is a guy that's probably a yep. Dalvin Tomlinson type player. Christian Barmer is six foot six and 290 pounds now, maybe 310 yeah. pound guy. He could be an interior guy. And you're also talking about you've got a commitment from Bobby Brown, who's yeah, probably more him, of an interior he, yeah, player. Definitely. So, um, you know, I, I think they're going to be going to be fine on the, on the inside, and they're continuing to recruit other guys as well. Yeah, so. they're working on it, Greg, for sure. Good call. All right, let's go to Dora and talk with Chris. Chris, welcome into TITV. Hey, thank you. I just wanted to say I know last year on that last drive that Clemson went and got the winning touchdown, the third receivers was like chipping our defensive backs. And our defensive bats will have to really pretty much communicate with each other. Yeah, Chris, good point. Uh, Eddie Jackson was not in that game. He had gotten hurt, lost uh, for the season against A&M. They missed him. Uh, Mika Fitzpatrick kind of has that role this year. But I'm, I'm with you. Clemson runs, runs a lot of rub routes. Alabama saw it up close and personal. Rub route, pick, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know. You know, I'm not in – we're not in those coaches' meetings. Um, you know, do you want to pass that off? What can – you know, but regardless, they got to do a better job of handling those pick plays. Yep. Period. Yeah, they've had a year to think about yeah. them. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, those were two crucial plays. Two touchdowns, pick plays is what they were. And, uh, you know, they resulted in two crucial touchdowns for Clemson. So, you certainly think that they will be prepared. Yeah. I know this. If I'm on that defensive staff, 13 is not beating me again. Well, you know what? He's got Renfro. three touchdown receptions this year. Three touchdowns. Three What's he got year? in Alabama? In the He's last got at year, least three six, or six? four you know? <laughs> I mean, in two games. <laughs> I mean, they have not been able to slow him down. But uh, I think they'll have a good plan this year in the secondary. All right, let's get a tweet in, Rod. And this is from uh, Doughboy. Uh, will Sean Dion have an opportunity to redshirt since he got hurt as a senior? No, uh, Doughboy, he is going to have to move on and get himself prepared for the NFL draft. That's what he's doing. He is missed by this defense two years in a row. They lost him late in the year. It just makes you sick to your stomach uh, because not only is he a terrific football player, he's a leader of that defense. Um, and he's still a leader on the defense. He's still out there practice talking with these guys. But, no, he's going to be moving on to the National Football League. Hopefully he'll be able to rehab. There's some recent video of him. You see the big knee brace. Look at him right there coaching, Rodney. Yeah. He's still a big part of this team, but he's missed on the well, field. Well, he's been a leader since he got here, to be honest with you. Out of high school, a guy that played as a true freshman. Uh, you know, it's a big loss because he certainly is the heart and soul, I think. Dale and Haleyville, you got to go fast. Dale, what's up, man? Yeah, how's the offense uh, stack up against uh, Clemson's defense? Well, uh, Clemson's defense against Alabama's offense, is that what he said? Alabama defense versus uh, Clemson offense. I think it stacks up pretty well on paper, by Dale, but you got to go out and you got to make plays. And they've got to limit the big plays by Clemson and uh, get off the field on third down. That's what killed them last year. 
Yeah, and, and, and when you look at Kelly Bryant, Gary, he's, he's, he's only thrown 13 touchdowns. Right. Passes. He is an effective passer, but he does not throw the ball like Deshaun Watson when you're talking about down right. the field. You know, they've lost some weapons. Now, listen, they have Deion Kane. You mentioned Renfro. Ray Ray McLeod's a big play guy as a wide receiver. Uh, the, the freshman running back, Etienne. Yeah, he I can mean, go. this guy can – he's they, averaging seven-plus a carry. They've got to make him drive it down the field, though, not give up the big plays. All right, still to come, our Sugar Bowl predictions. Round three between Alabama and Clemson. Who wins? We'll tell you what we think next. Be sure to tune in to WVUA 23 on New Year's Day at 11 a.m. for our Sugar Bowl edition of Crimson Tide Kickoff presented by Ziegler's Season to Please Meets. We'll have a full hour, all Alabama football, all live from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. It starts at 11 a.m. and we'll re-air it shortly before game time at 6 p.m. Well, welcome back to Tider Insider TV. Rodney, it's been over a month since our last game pick before the Iron Bowl. Didn't turn out too well for us. Alabama Clemson Part 3, take it away. Well, I tell you, Gary, you know, one thing we've talked about is, is Alabama on third downs. Uh, we've talked about defense getting off the field, but we really talked here recently about the offense converting and sustaining drives. Remember last year's game, Alabama, I think, went seven straight drives, three and out. I mean, that's going to be key in this game. You look at Clemson's defense, they only allow 28% on third down. So this is going to be a really tough chore. But I think whoever wins this game, it's going to be a, in, late. Again, late. I'm, I'm going to pick Alabama. I, I can't believe how close our picks are, kid. Uh, you know, I have no reason to believe otherwise either, Ryan. It's going to go right down to the wire. Uh, I think Clemson is good enough to beat Alabama, even if Alabama plays well. But something just tells me uh, that Alabama got second life getting into the playoff. They did not play well against Auburn. I think they're going to find a way. I got Bama winning 24 to 23 Whoa. on Monday night. All right, that's our picks. Of course, you get to make your pick as well. And one thing you ought to pick is doing your shopping for all your great clothes at the locker room, downtown Tuscaloosa, or shop online at locker-room.biz. Get that original elephant wear or much more at the locker room. A replay tonight of the show at 1030. You can catch it anytime at WVUA23.com. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Good night, everybody. <laughs>